So this is the second part of our discussion about the closest pair of points problem. Just to remind you where we left things uh, last time, we figured out how to split the points equally in two halves, the set Q and the set R, based on the X coordinate. And we set up here our basic recursive algorithm. So the idea is that up to this point in the algorithm, we have the pair of points Q0 star Q1 star. This is the pair of points in Q that are at the smallest distance. And similarly, R0 star R1 star is the pair of points in R at the smallest distance. So how do we combine two um, solutions now? Let's say, for example, that these are the two points that are at the smallest distance in uh, Q, and their distance is 12. And here, this is the pair of points at the smallest distance in R, and this is their smallest distance. The question that we now have um, is, are there any pair of points, pairs of points, such that one point is in Q, and the other point is in R, such that their distance is smaller than the smaller of these two distances. So if we define as delta the minimum of these two distances, we are looking for any pair of points that uh, one of them is in Q, the other is in R, that has a distance that is even smaller than delta. Now, to answer this question, let's first of all form a vertical line at the x-coordinate of uh, the rightmost point in Q. So this, the first thing that we can notice here is that if you have a pair of points such that one of them is in Q and the other is in R, and the distance between them is smaller than delta, again, delta is this minimum, then both of these points, they have to be within delta from this line L. It cannot be that I have two points, let's call this point Q and this point R. It cannot be that the distance of these two points is smaller than delta, even though at least one of the two points has a distance from the vertical line L that is more than delta. Why is that the case? If we assume, for instance, that Q is at a distance that is more than delta from the vertical line, then given that the point R is on the other side of the line, the distance between Q and R would certainly be more than delta. So what this means for us is that we can now focus only on the points in Q and in R that are within delta from this vertical line L. We don't have to consider points that are further away than delta from the vertical line. Now, this reduction here is not necessarily buying us anything, anything because in the worst case, you can imagine that all of the points that we are given are within a distance delta from L. So, so let's define here as S the set of these points that are within delta from the vertical line. And specifically, let's order those points based on their Y coordinate. So S Y is the sequence of the points that are within delta from L. Notice that we can um, do this operation within linear time because we already have all of the points, remember, ordered based on the Y coordinate. So we just have to do a linear pass through that sorted list of points PY to find only those points, their X coordinate is within delta from L. Okay, let's go back to write some more code based on what we just discussed. So earlier we had written up to this point, the two recursive calls. Now you first compute the delta parameter, which is the minimum of these two distances, the solution in Q and the solution in R. We found the rightmost point in Q, and that gave us the X coordinate X star. So the vertical line L that we formed 
is the line in which the x coordinate is x star. We found all of the points s that are within distance delta from that line and we sorted these points based on their y coordinate to get the sy list which we can do in linear time. So now the question we're facing is is there any pair of points in s here that have a pairwise distance that is smaller than delta. If you just consider all pairs of points, as I said before, perhaps you are not saving anything. You may need to do in the worst case n square comparisons and we don't want anything that is n square. So what I will show you now, perhaps surprisingly, is that we don't need to consider all pairs of points. We can go through these points one by one and for each of these points in S, we only have to make a constant number of comparisons with other points in this list to see whether that pair of points has a distance that is smaller than delta. At this point, the proof gets much more interesting and uh, geometric in nature. So remember, this vertical line is what we call L. Imagine that we construct these little squares both at the left and at the right of this vertical line. The length of the side is half delta, so delta over 2 here, delta over 2 here. So we can have two such uh, squares on each side of the line. The first point I want us to see is that within each of these squares we can have at most one Point. We cannot have two or more points. Why is that? Because if you look inside one of these squares, the maximum distance, which is of course at the diagonal, which is lower than delta. So if you had two points inside the same uh, square, they would be at a smaller distance than delta and that would violate our assumption that delta is the smallest distance between any pair of points either in this side, the side of Q, or in this side, the side of R. So we just saw this first point that any square includes at most one point. The second point I want us to see is that if you have two points that are two or more rows apart, for example, imagine that you have a point here, this point number 27, and another point up here. They are separated by two rows, as you can see. The distance between these two points would certainly be more than delta. Why? Because these two rows, they add a distance of twice half delta, which is equal to delta. Now we can use the previous two points in constructing uh, the last part of our algorithm. So remember first of all what is SY? SY is the set of all the points that are within delta from the line L ordered based on their Y coordinate. For example here you see point 25, 26, 27, 28 they are ordered based on their Y coordinate these um, numbers become higher as we go up. So we know that in each of these squares you can have at most one point. We also know that if two points, let's say i and j, are at least two rows apart, then their distance will be more than delta. And so we don't care about that pair of points. Look at this little theorem here. If we have two points in this ordered list, let's call them points SI and SJ, and the absolute difference between I and J is greater or equal than 12, then the distance between these two points will be at least delta. Why is that true? I mean, where does the number 12 come from? The number 12 is the number of these squares in these three successive rows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
If the point i is in a certain square of this row, then we only need to consider basically the squares of this same row and the two subsequent rows. And these are a total of 12 squares. Any point that is in a, in a square that is further up would certainly be at a larger distance, larger or equal than, than delta from the point that we uh, consider i. So this suggests that we can go through the list s y point by point and for every point we can calculate the distance the distance between that point and the next 11 essentially points in the list s y. If any of those points uh, has a distance with i that is smaller than delta then we update the minimum distance we have found in uh, the list as y. Otherwise we move to the next point. I want to say one last thing about this. Um, if you think about this a bit more carefully you will realize that this number 12 is actually uh, larger than necessary. That actually we can reduce this uh, number down to 7. I will not get into the details here because it doesn't really matter if it is 7 or if it is 12. The bottom line is that in uh, any case we are comparing, we are calculating the distance between point i and the constant number of other points. So it wouldn't really change the asymptotic runtime of the algorithm if instead of 12 points we uh, compare with 10 or 9 or 7. But you can think about um, what is really um, the uh, maximum number of uh, neighbors we need to consider in order to uh, find uh, a pair of points that may be at a distance of uh, less than delta. So finally we are ready to look at the complete algorithm. Remember last time we had stopped at this point where we constructed this ordered list as y of the points that are within delta from L. That uh, list was ordered based on the y coordinate. So the new thing that we do here is that we go through the list point by point and for every point s of that list we calculate the distance from s to each of the next 11 points as we discussed before in SY because if it is 12 or more points the distance would be at least delta. If we find such a pair of points S and S prime that have a distance that is um, smaller than uh, the distance we have seen so far then um, we update our the minimum distance we have seen so far um, in uh, SY. So finally we are ready now to find out whether the smallest distance we have seen is the smallest distance in Q between uh, points that are in Q, whether it is the smallest distance in R between points in R or whether it is the distance we have found uh, in this uh, uh, ordered list as Y between one point in Q and one point in R. So this is what happens here. This is the uh, minimum distance we have seen in uh, uh, SY and if this is uh, smaller than delta, delta is the uh, minimum between the distance in Q and the distance in R, then we return of course um, uh, the points S and S prime. Else if the smaller distance is the one that is in Q, then we return those two points. Else we return the points that we found in R because that would be the pair um, with the smallest distance.